Okay, here's what I'm playing with today. I'm trying to figure out which one of these two automotive pens I want to put up on my roof from the 90 watt panel, so it's really not producing a whole lot. Here's the amazing race taking place over there. I'm going to come over here and demonstrate with the added power what I can do. And uh, as you can see, the meat is spinning around quite nicely. Okay. Now we're going to go back in the garage, and I'm going to turn on, I think I got uh, nine lights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all right, I'll light eight. Um, there they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight. I think they're 100 watts a piece. That's 800 watts. But even though it's fluorescent light, 800 watts is 800 watts. What a dummy. I used to think it didn't matter because they were fluorescent. So stupid I am. Probably not the only one though. Now let's see if the meter is still going backwards. Well, I'll be damned. It may not be going backwards. But it's not going forwards either. And yes, kitties, it is still just barely going backwards. But there's 800 watts of fluorescent lights that I'm getting free right now from the sun. Yes, yeah, so you can see the little black line, it is moving, going backwards. So there's 800 watts in the garage being used right now. My ceiling fans are on, my computer's on standby, and the refrigerator of course is in the house and what else it needs. And once again, no tricks going on, there's all my lights. Oh that's pretty damn cool. I can't wait to get the other 1400 plus watts hooked up. I'll be kicking ass then. Alright, this is just another little clip of uh, my world during the day. I'm going to get back to my fan press. Okay, friends and neighbors and YouTubers, here's another update by Crazy Me Kilo J. And I was wrong. Each tube is 75 watts, so that's 150 watts times 8. So, that's 800. That's uh, what? 1200 watts? Not so good at math, but I just wanted to show you that. So, you know, no BSing going on. We're all on. They're all the same. So, this is 150 watts a piece, not 100. Sorry, my mistake. I just want to prove that this is live and it's actually really going on. Okay, here's just a quick video. This is a Honda motor. If you turn it, you can feel resistance in there. It's a nice PMA motor. So you can feel this very slight cogging. And it'll damn near whip out of your hands. However, like most of them, there's something you won't see in anybody's class. See where this little straw is? I just drilled that hole. The front bearing is easy to get at. These back ones are a bitch. They're sealed, so you got to make a little hole. Throw a little bit of oil in there. Wipe it clean and put a dab of silicone over it. Nine out of ten times, the noises will stop and they'll spin just as new. Because the grease gets hot and wears out. And that's why these fail. There's really nothing inside these to go wrong. Okay. You probably won't hear that anywhere else. But I'm showing you how to fix these things. I got a friggin' garage full of them. So I got some brand new, nice big uh, units over there. I also got three of these on end generators I gotta get rid of. That's out of, I think, a Lincoln. It's a Bosch unit. It probably needs about 15 amps to 10. And then I got that one, which works. That one draws a lot of amps, it works good. Another one over there. And back here in my pile of crap, I got uh, one, two, three, uh, six, or three doubles. And some fan motors and window lift motors and all kinds of electronic stuff I never throw away because it's quite handy. Okay, enough goofing off, back to work. Alright, this is a little quick update. I fixed the motor and I put a little dab of uh, RTV silicone. And I'm going to give you a little trick. And uh, actually, I should have showed you doing this. 
I don't know how many guys go out and buy this stuff. About five, six bucks a, uh, a tube. This one's about six months old. And you notice it's still nice and clean. I'm going to give you a little secret. When you're doing something like this and you get oil on your fingers, take that little oily sucker right there with a good amount of oil on it. And it's kind of hard to do. I'm going to have to use another finger. Take take the oily finger. See this finger that's moving? It doesn't have oil on it. Make believe it does. Take the oily finger and rub it against the silicone. And when you're done, replace the cap. Okay, and before you use your silicone again, squirt a little out and wipe that little bit of oily shit off. Whoops, I meant stuff. Sorry. <laughs> I swore on YouTube. Oh no. Anyway, that's another little trick I shared with you. That'll keep them for up to a year. A little finger full of oil does wonders. You probably already knew that. Okay, back to the pan.